Welcome back to the summer coaching series. Today, I am so excited to introduce my husband and partner, Tony Brown, as our special guest. Hey, Tony, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yes. So Tony is a man who embodies the saying, strength is in the struggle. A husband, father of two, seasoned entrepreneur. Tony brings over 20 years of experience in the fitness industry to the table. He's a certified personal trainer, performance specialist, a nutrition consultant, metabolic specialist, and the co-founder of Cali Fit Body. It's a groundbreaking venture reshaping the way we perceive and approach fitness. As a personal trainer, Tony's exceptional skills and multiple specialty certifications allow him to cater to a broad spectrum of fitness needs. From his humble beginnings as a personal trainer at Equinox Fitness to overseeing three of the most successful clubs and ultimately spearheading his own successful personal training company, Brown Built Performance. Tony's professional journey is nothing short of inspiring. Tony's journey hasn't been all smooth sailing. He's no stranger to setbacks and obstacles, having undergone multiple surgeries, 2016, 2017, 2018, including shoulder disc replacement in his back and knee surgery. Um, while many of these, uh, while many would have taken this as these adversities as a cue to slow down, Tony remained unflinching. His motto, success is a science mirrors his systematic, relentless approach towards overcoming adversity. With his extensive knowledge of the human body and unwavering determination, he managed to not only recover, but to come back stronger, healthier, and smarter. Tony's unique approach to fitness, born out of his struggles and personal journey, emphasizes the motto, consistently good, occasionally perfect. He firmly believes that the extremes of fitness and nutrition are unsustainable, advocating instead for a comprehensive and holistic view of health. From nutrition to understanding metabolism supplements, metabolic assessments, and heart rate-based cardio, Tony's approach to fitness is revolutionary, but at the heart of it all, he places strength training as the gold standard and a testament to his strength and adversary adversity. Tony's reputation for next level programming is well earned. He's recognized for his uncanny ability to create fitness, nutrition, and cardio programs that deliver real results for real people. His methodology is not about quick fixes or temporary transformations, but lifelong changes that stand the test of time. Please join us today in this conversation as we dot and as we dive into a conversation with Tony Brown, a man who has struggled through strength and challenges and turned those challenges into opportunities. Thank you, Tony, so much. Again, we have brought you on today to talk all things strength training. Yeah, well, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Could have said it better myself. I wish I only had those three surgeries from 2016 on, but uh, unfortunately my list is a lot longer, but hey. <laughs> so Tony, though, tell us why are you it's a man prone to injury? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, you can't say prone to injury and you know, being in my forties and only having a certain amount of surgeries, I'll say six surgeries, I'd say, uh, through sport and challenge, you sometimes push it beyond your threshold. And sometimes there's circumstances you can't help, especially in sport and somebody falls on your leg and tweaks your ankle the wrong way and ruptures some, yeah. some tendons, you might have to have surgery. Uh, but then yeah. there's also self-preservation and, and things that occur over time that can ultimately lead you to want to have surgery. So Mary, yeah, but, yeah, but it's true when you are um, <laughs> out there pushing yourself physically um, that the, the chance that injury occurs, it can be higher. But I think that also, you know, that kind of rolls right into strength training because one of the benefits I'm sure of strength training is um, injury prevention and and if we're not preventing, then we're putting our body in the best place so that we can recover from injuries quickly. Um, so that maybe that's something we can dive into a little bit more. But I did want to just start by just telling our listeners what is the benefits, um, the key benefit of strength training and the difference between strength training and cardiovascular training. Like, are they the same? Can Is one better than the other? Like, what's the deal there? What is the deal there? Yeah, I mean, you can read uh, so many magazines, blog posts, Instagram posts that will demonize one or uh, make the other one sound like this is all you have to do 20 minutes of this per day to change your life. And unfortunately, as you said in my introduction, those extremes are just that they're just extremes. They, they don't, don't work long term strategies. So what's the difference between strength training and cardiovascular training? And, and really, the biggest thing is that they're the same, yet they have their distinct differences. Obviously, with strength training, it, the name and strength 
means that you are working against an external resistance. There's something, a dumbbell, a kettlebell, barbells, machines, but some type of, ex some type of external force, weight, resistance that your body has to work against. And in doing so, that creates a response from your body to basically get stronger. You have to get stronger in order to lift five pounds versus 10 pounds, regardless of what it is. And then you look at cardiovascular training, cardiovascular training, again, the name cardio, I'm going to do cardio. You're going to improve your cardiovascular performance. So that's your heart, your lungs, and your body's ability to pump oxygen via your, through your veins, throughout your entire body, throughout your entire working system. Uh, and it's critical. It's critical for you to have good cardiovascular uh, efficiency and health uh, for longevity, but also too, it helps with recovery. It allows you to push yourself and achieve new levels of fitness with your resistance training. They really work hand in hand uh, to be, to maximize each other. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. Like I have noticed that, um, and also we can put it in the context of, you know, sports specific. So if we think of our cardiovascular in terms of like a sport, and typically that tends to be like our running or swimming, our cycling, um, paddle boarding, things like that, um, you know, and, and that's very specific and it does train our cardiovascular system, but how, um, you know, for, for me when I'm running, so, um, I notice when I am not strength training, you know, it's one level of running. And when I've been consistent with my strength training, it makes my running better. So so um, I, I, I agree, um, and we'll talk about this as we go on, that strength has become like the king in my mind as well. But um, I have a real true big heart for cardio. Like I'm a cardio queen from right way back, um, and I love it. So I, I don't want to give that up. Um, and I think that there's obviously like there's the crossover and the benefits. So, you know, we did talk about, you know, briefly, but like, what is the crossover between both of those? Like how, what do they do that is the same? And then, um, and then we know the difference between strength training is I'm going to actually build, um, strength. I'm going to build my muscle mass. And then tell, I love the way though, that you talk about strength training. So please tell us that as well. well so we, first of all, the, the, go ahead, you go ahead. Oh, be careful when you say build muscle mass. Because it's not necessarily indicative of resistance training or strength training. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. not inherent that if I'm doing do strength training, I'm going to build a muscle mass. So let's go back to the first question. What do they do the same? What's the same? Mm -hmm. They make your heart stronger, right? Both uh, of them. Both of them do. Why? Yes, I, absolutely. I, I, so I think, stated, you know, let's be careful using that term gain muscle mass is because a lot of times what happens when you're doing strength training is you're actually just becoming more efficient at using the muscle mass that you currently have, that it is not, about, that is not about trying to build bigger muscles, but it's here is my body. Here's the strength that I have. And I want to become more efficient at it. And I want to learn to move better and more effectively against resistance. Both um, improve your general health both improve your general fitness, both create, you know, cause I think with cardio too, we're looking for like the calorie output that, that's, you know, kind of the programming, but both create the calorie output, right? So would you say that? Yeah, both create a calorie output. And here is the biggest benefit where the two start to diverge from each other is one of the biggest benefits of strength training is the recovery from the strength training. So when you're working out, and break it down, peel away the onion. What is it that you're doing? You're actually trying to damage your muscle fibers. You're trying to hurt yourself with that resistance training, not hurt yourself to where you have to go to the hospital, but damage the muscle tissue. So your body is forced to take the nutrients that you're putting in through your diet and build those muscle fibers back, build them back stronger, better, more efficient. What happens? Metabolism caloric consumption. It takes calories to repair and rebuild. And so that is the biggest benefit to somebody who is starting resistance training, somebody who's looking to lose weight and somebody who ultimately wants to change their body, uh, visually change their body. Strength training is hands down by far the best thing that they can do. I'm so glad that you talked about that. So, you know, the thing that I always say for strength training and try to try to shift it in people's brains and to, into the mindset is that it is metabolic training. Is that something that you can speak on? Because what you just talked about was body composition. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is huge too, because, you know, that'll, that'll be, you know, one of the next questions that I ask. but, um, that's how I talk about strength training is that it's really, it's like metabolic training. So you indicated what happens afterwards, but you know, when we start to think about what, um, the benefits of the, the, you know, micro damage, the micro tears and what, and what that's doing on an internal level and creating the, um, the health 
and or increasing, you know, lean muscle, what does that do on a metabolic level, just from like a high level, you know, standpoint, what does that do to my ability to burn calories? Yeah. Well, let's first just understand that word of metabolic, right? And when we're talking about metabolic, we're talking about metabolism. And what is metabolism? Metabolism is metabolism is your body's ability to burn calories. What are calories? It's energy. Well, calories obviously get a big, a big negative misnomer in that, oh, calories are your enemies, no calories, calories. Calories are just like octanes and gas. It's just a form of a measurement of energy. My body needs calories. And in fact, on average, you need 10 calories per pound of muscle or per pound of tissue. Human tissue needs at least 10 calories to sustain that piece of tissue. Brain tissue, heart tissue, lung tissue, a muscle tissue. It's 10 calories, 10 calories to sustain that, that piece of tissue. So when I am exercising, I am burning calories. We all know this, whether we wear our, our Fitbits and our Apple watches and our heart rate monitors, we wanna see how many calories we're burning, how much energy are we exuding to, to create this form or function. Then on the backside of that, depending upon what you're doing, if you're doing super intense cardiovascular training, you're going to have post-exercise caloric consumption. We just talked about when you're doing that micro trauma to your muscles, you're going to have post-exercise calorie consumption for rebuilding of the muscle tissue. And, and then as you move on past those basic entry-level forms of uh, metabolic training or metabolic conditioning, you then have how your body changes long-term. So you asked a question about hormones, the impact of hormones right? Uh, you're, you're increasing your body's ability to sustain or be uh, more absorbent of the hormone insulin. And we all know insulin as it relates to weight loss and weight gain. So when I'm exercising, my body is actually better at, at producing and being more sensitive to insulin levels. So uh, long-term health benefits is I'm, I'm ultimately able to manage my calories more effectively. I don't have to be in a position where I'm super restrictive all the time because of my health and fitness. I can enjoy my cheat days, or I can not be on a diet hundred percent of the time and still not have a massive negative impact to my overall fitness and my overall look and, and, and my overall health factors. So my lean muscle tissue is actually, is it more metabolically active? That's what, you know, that's what I've heard, right? So like the more lean muscle I have, the um, more calories my body ends up burning at rest. And this is kind of like the dots that you're connecting to creating, you know, um, so that strength training becomes metabolic training because if I'm increasing or um, the efficiency or even the number, or uh, I guess, let me say it in a different way. Like if I'm increasing the um, efficiency of my lean muscle mass or actually just increasing lean muscle mass, and especially in a ratio to like the, the rest of my body to, to body fat and to the other organs, then I do become more metabolically efficient meaning my body's better, better able to handle calories, calories, um, in so that I have more space, more flexibility to, to manage calories and, um, a better opportunity to maintain or, um, actually get myself into a weight loss position. Absolutely. When, when you're, when you're doing strength training and you're trying to increase the efficiency of your muscles and for some trying to increase the muscle mass. So, you know, again, that could be, uh, I have a saggy butt and I want to lift my butt up. What do I have to do? I got to build the muscle tissue in my glutes, which means I have to have more muscle tissue in my glutes. So my glutes aren't sagging off the back of my leg. Uh, and in doing so, I'm raising my metabolism because I will have more muscle on my body, on my skeletal muscle system, skeletal system. I will have more muscle. More muscle means more calories being burned on a per minute basis. Yeah, just even at rest. Um, yeah, great. What role does um, strength training play in not only our ability to increase our muscle growth, but then how that plays that into fat loss over time? Yeah. Well, as we were just talking about, when you increase your lean muscle mass, you increase your metabolism. What is your metabolism? It is the measurement of caloric consumption. How many calories do you burn per day? All right. That is my metabolism. My metabolism, I'm putting money in or putting calories in, I'm burning them off because of my metabolism. So as I increase my lean muscle tissue, and, and this is again, another kind of fallacy of the industry that you can't build muscle and lose weight at the same time. That is completely incorrect. You can do that. But where most people get lost in that statement is how quickly they're losing the weight, right? They want to see pound, uh, one pound of muscle gain and 10 pounds of weight loss. And that's never going to be the case. But you can slowly increase your lean muscle tissue. 
therefore it slowly increase your metabolism. And as your metabolism is increasing and you're maintaining the same caloric intake. So let's just say 2000 calories, you're eating 2000 calories every single day. You started weight training resistance program at the beginning, your metabolism was at 1800 and then it grows to 1900. Then it grows to 2000. Then it grows to 21 and 22. And before you know it over six, nine, 12, 18 weeks, You've increased your lean muscle tissue, you've increased your metabolism, and now what once was a position of only being able to burn 1,800 calories a day, without doing anything, you're burning 2,200 calories a day. And if you're still putting in the same amount of calories, you will start to lose weight. And how that impacts you is body composition, burning body fat, changing how your body looks. And you could do that without with stepping on a scale and never seeing a change to the actual number on the scale. But compositionally, your composition is changing. Um, okay, so you hit on two things that uh, I one was accidental. So one, you um, said you I think you said money in, but that's actually the exact way that I love to talk about calories because I think it really hits home. So you know, we if we think about strength training as a long term investment, right? So it is the the work, and it's not not to say that it you know takes so long to actually see results, but if we talk about it as like your long term investment plan, um, so that it lays the foundation that that pays off slowly over time. It's like. Uh, I shouldn't talk stocks because I don't know. I'm like, what's your blue chip? Is that the one that you buy? You buy and like hold, um, like whatever that looks like. <laughs> um, but but it pays bigger over time, right? So in, in relationship to cardiovascular, who gives us like a um, a big payoff immediately, but there's no long term. I shouldn't say that, but there's less long term payoff, or it's just not as um, a long term payoff. So that. Uh, to, to rephrase what you just said about increasing the metabolic efficiency, putting it in terms of, of money, what you've said is, hey, at first you had $1,800 to spend um, every day. And then by doing no more work or, you know, by like just doing the work that you do currently, so, um, you now have grown that to $2,200 a day. So um, you still now you have more money to spend each day uh, on your food, basically, you know, of what that looks like. Um, so I love that. And then uh, you then you talked about body composition. So um I love, let's go right into th this question and we'll bring in body composition um, at, right back into this topic. So what I wanted to know is, you know, knowing all that we know, who should incorporate strength training into their fitness re re regimen? And then is there a particular individual who stands to gain more or someone who, who has a goal or if a goal, is there a goal more, you know, more tailored to strength training? So if you could speak on that for a minute. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I mean, everybody should be doing strength training. Everybody within a certain age category really is what we should be talking about. Because really, strength training for adolescents, I'm not a big uh, fan of uh, regarding their growth plates and, and their bones haven't yet fused. So, but, you know, we're talking about just your general populace adults and everyone should be doing some form of strength training, some form of resistance based training. And, and that there's a very key there that that does not mean body weight. Oh, body I was just going to ask you that <laughs> body weight, although you are working against the resistance is the same resistance that you've been working against your entire life. And that that resistance is only there because of gravity. So ultimately, when you're doing strength training, you have to be working against an external load for it to be strength training. The one group of individuals who most benefit from strength training are those that are overweight and in an extreme case are obese. So ultimately, if you take somebody who is overweight, and we're, when we're saying 20, 30, 40, 50 plus pounds overweight, teaching them how to squat and stand up against a resistance has massive benefits to their skeletal muscle system and massive benefits to their overall metabolism, going back to what we were just talking about. And that's the biggest key. They have to spark their metabolism. And the only way that's going to happen is with resistance training. Yes, they can burn calories all day long doing cardiovascular uh, exercise. And it is important for them to work their cardiovascular system, no doubt about it. However, if we're talking, you got 30 minutes, you have 45 minutes, you have 60 minutes, what's going to be mo the most beneficial, especially for that populace of individual, it's going to be your resistance training. Yeah. And I love that because, you know, what we understand too, when someone is, um, when someone is overweight, when someone is obese, that there's a hormonal element to what's happening uh, in that metabolic system. And like, not to go into the, to the hormone specifics that are happening, but we understand, you know, uh, broad conversation, metabolism and hormones like that, they enter, like that's 
a talking, they talk to each other. Like we can't have one without the other. So when we are improving our metabolism, we're actually improving things at a hormonal level. And that's exactly what has, you know, kind of gone, um, into a, uh, into, into a, a, oh, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but like, you know, we're, we're in a, we have an issue with hormones when we are obese and overweight that can be corrected or, or at least facilitated in the correct direction by incorporating strength training, working at that metabolic um, hormonal level, because that's what's happening. Um, and, you know, and I think that a lot of good studies are, are coming out more and more about um, the benefits to uh, over to losing weight, the benefits like connecting the dots even more strongly and placing strength training um, at, above cardiovascular training for that reason. What's the general recommendation for someone who is doing no days of strength training today? Where do I step into? Do I go straight to three days a week? Yeah, well, my recommendation is always based upon what you have available to you that will allow you to be the most consistent. So uh, if, if for the time being, one day a week is what you have available to be the most consistent, then that's your starting point. Two days, three days, because no matter how where your starting point is, uh, ideally, the more days that you have to uh, apply yourself to a health and wellness and fitness regimen, the better it's going to be for you. So, oh. we were, you know, we have what would be the, the goal and where's my starting point. And ultimately somewhere in there, the sweet spot is what can you do consistent week in and week out their new year's resolution. This is the year that I'm going to get fit, that I'm going to join a gym and I'm going to start exercising and working out. And typically people who do that, they see phenomenal results within the first three weeks of doing so, because they went from nothing to something. And in some ex extreme cases, a lot of something, and they're doing that and they're seeing their great results. But then something happens to almost 88%, or actually it's, it's really less than that, but 88% of the people who join a gym or start a fitness program as a New Year's resolution by Super Bowl Sunday. And that is typically they quit. They stop doing it. It goes back to what can you do consistently? And when you're doing it consistently and you can, you can apply yourself to that, that will create a long-term effect of healthy habits. Those healthy habits will create changes. Those changes will spur you on to keep going. Totally. So, I mean, it really just does, go, you know, call back to, you know, one of your mottos, which is consistently good, occasionally perfect. Um, right. So it's like, what can you be consistently good at? Because we know that it, um, consistency is better than intensity. Right. So, you know, and also something I'd like to talk about is like the stair step. There you go. Um, so I like to talk about the, um, stair step, right? So what you illustrated was like, um, zero to the top of the stairs and your body will accommodate to the top of the stairs. Right. But what I like to explain it as like how I like to visualize it as, well, you've missed all these stair step opportunities that could actually get you like, even in the same time frame, could actually get you higher uh, at the end, you know, to in the same amount of time, if you would have allowed the adaptation to happen slowly, but allowing the small stair steps of, of adaptability to happen. And then, um, you know, if we go, if you're not doing any, do one, your body will need to adapt to one for a certain amount of time. But then once it adapts, right, then if you're doing one, hey, four weeks later, you've got to start doing two, right? Like, does that make sense? You know, yeah. even to just say, even if we don't attach like the actual four week, you know, number, but like, a, that's the, the, the stair step for people is like, if you're doing zero, do one, then once you've got one down, do two, then, yeah. you know, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And it's very challenging for some people. And that's why we all, I always focus on people starting a strength training program over a cardiovascular program, because most people, when they want to, they've had enough and like, I need to do something for physically active. I need to get more active. I need to get in shape. The number one thing that most people will, especially if they don't have the discretionary income to join a gym or hire a personal trainer is they start running outside and, and is, is such a detrimental thing to do to their joints and their connective tissue, because it's like, you're, you're not currently in shape. You're carrying around 20 to 30 pounds of extra weight. And, and we have a real tough time understanding relative. What is that 20 to 30 pounds of extra weight? But if I were to take that person who is 20, 30 pounds overweight, and I say, here's a 30 pound dumbbell, I want you to take this. And I want you to run up and down these stairs, these 10 flights of stairs. 
uh, for 30 minutes and you're like, you're crazy. Like, well, that's what you're doing when you go out on run on the pavement or the asphalt or the concrete. It's just, you don't realize it because you've been holding that weight internally, meaning between your shoulders and hips, you've been holding that weight and you've accommodated to that. And then you go out there and you beat yourself into the ground. And that's why by the third week of doing that, and even longer, six weeks of doing that, your joints, your body is screaming at you and you give up because it hurts. Yeah. It hurts too much. And I'm not seeing the changes that I want. I saw the changes initially and that spurred yeah. me on. And then I gave up because everything hurts. I'm not seeing results. And I just fall back into my old habits. Yeah, no, absolutely right. That makes so much sense. But, you know, I think too, that that's always my um, initial go-to is uh, because that, you know, that it would you know, we definitely want to talk about like, what's the, there is a psychological benefit, you know, and I'll ask you that in a minute, but like, there's a psychological benefit to both. Um, and I have really connected my like psychological benefit, like feeling like I'm actually doing something to running, right. That had always been my connection. And I've changed that slowly over the last, you know, probably, um, seven years to where I still love my running, but now I'm able to see, um, I'm able to see the payoff of, you know, seven years of strength training as uh, a recurring theme in my life where now I'm strength training, you know, two to anywhere from two to four days a week. And that used to just be running and hit cardio, which, you know, um, uh, obviously has its own, but we, we won't have onto that. But I do want to just talk briefly one second and touch on another group, you know, um, the group that wants the, the body composition change. And um, so maybe they're not a over severely overweight or they're not obese, but what they desire is, you know, to look better. And I don't necessarily know if they actually have it in their awareness that they're like, I want a body recomposition change, you know, but what, you know, they're like, I want to lose weight, but I also want to get muscle. Right. So, but what I heard you mention earlier, like those, those people with that desire strength training is also their go-to, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, classified as most people want to look better naked. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, that's, that's really what it comes down to. It's summertime, going to the pool, taking my shirt off, wearing a bathing suit, bikini, whatever it may be. And I just want to look better, more confident. And, and most people say like, got to do cardio, got to do cardio, got to do cardio. But cardio is not going to build any form of curvature in your body, we'll yeah. say. It's not going to make you doing cardio unless you are an avid sprinter. Uh, but you doing cardio is not going to build up your glutes to look better in your bathing suit. Uh, it's not going to build up your the muscle of your legs to look better. It's going to build up the endurance of the muscle that you currently have, but it won't actually make your legs more shapely. You have to be doing something on a consistent basis. So three times a week is the sweet spot because there's also a frequency component to it. You need to hit your body with some type of stress, exercise stress, once every 48 hours. Now, if you're training for more of a sculpted look or you want to go to the gym more often, uh, then we change your overall exercise profile in terms of what you're doing under different days. But in terms of just over general overall strength and resistance training, it's a full body workout every 48 hours and your body sees massive results from doing so and then the last thing which we talked about before in terms of what is strength training there has to be a level of intensity now intensity doesn't have to be i gotta go uh go do some crossfitting and and lift weight that i shouldn't be lifting and jump on things i shouldn't be jumping on but it just means that you have to be challenging yourself with the resistance that it's going to cause your body to say oh man i better get stronger i better adapt to what it is that i'm doing um, and, and it's a, a, a reactionary process. It is, it is your body adapting to the stimuli, the stimuli being the intensity of the resistance training that causes you to change and ultimately, uh, look different from what it is that you're doing. Okay. A couple of questions came up for me when you were talking. So, um, you know, one is a couple of just general questions. Do you think that, um, like soreness is the indication of a good workout? Um, it's a, it's a little bit of a gray area. So, um, you can have extreme soreness, which would indicate that you went a little beyond your threshold, did it a little bit too hard. Meaning, uh, if you can't sit down on the toilet, uh, after doing a workout and that, that soreness lasts for two days straight, there's a high probability that you may have gone too hard. However, there are some uh, some secondary things you have to look at. One is what's your sleep been like over those last 48 hours? How about your hydration? Are you drinking yeah. enough? It's your, and your water ultimately is the oil of your body that helps things 
move throughout. So the body flushing it out. Uh, and then nutrition, were you getting enough of the proper nutrition? Because you could say, I did the easiest workout possible and I'm sore. I don't get it. Well, if you weren't sleeping well, you didn't hydrate properly and you weren't getting the proper nutrition, that's why you're sore. So it's yeah. a little bit of a gray area from that. Ultimately, what you want, the, the, the goal is after a, after a good strength training workout, you want to know, you want to feel that you did a workout. Like yeah. uh, a, little, a little tight, a little sore, not so bad. If I do a really good warm up, I feel better. My body feels better and I'm ready to go. But it may take 24 hours of you feeling just a little uncomfortable, a little tight, a little swollen, a little sore. Uh, and then by 48 hours, so by we'll say Wednesday, if you worked out Monday by Wednesday, you're feeling good, you're back, you're ready to get going yeah. again. That's that indicates that you were right at the right level of exercise and fitness. So I tell you, it's been um, a, an evolution for me over the you know last 10 years. But what I've really like come to understand, um, and it's hard, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to like necessarily articulate it, but like, there is a sweet spot in the workout where it makes me want to continue day after day after day versus, you know, um, I, again, like cardio queen, um, used to just go to like really intense classes and I love them in the moment, like the endorphins in the moment, but it took a lot of psychological prep to like, get me to go back day after day after day. Like, you know, and of course there's different phases of your life where you're like, yes, I want to just kill myself and I'm ready for it and I'm here for it. But as, you know, a busy professional, a parent, an entrepreneur, like um, that, you know, lack of sleep, multiple stressors, like that willingness to be like, I'm going to go crush myself. Like it just doesn't happen. But but what I found is, you know, a sweet spot, again, like in the workout intensity where it's not too long. It's not, um, it's not so exhausting. And I'm also not immobile the next day that really does make this, uh, you know, sweet it, it spirals where you're just like, let's keep going. I want to keep this momentum. So I think that that is, you know, something that is going to be unique, but I think that that's something attainable. And that's something that, you know, our listeners need to be really kind of looking for is, is, to create that type of vibe and that type of energy with their workouts where you do want to keep going. Yes, you worked, you know, yes, there's a discipline involved there, but it feels really damn good to go and to do that. Um, yeah. So um, can you speak just for a second, you know, in touch on for you, what are, what are the, you know, psychological aspects and benefits to strength training and, you know, how does, your discipline and consistency translate to, you know, your personal growth and um, just your mental strength. And especially, you know, uh, over the last, you know, couple of years. For me personally, it is my, my sanctuary. Yeah. I go to work out because I need a, a space for myself. I need, I need the ability just to be by myself, my music in my ears and just go and it allows me to work and, and play mental chess, if you will, to work through my problems, to have conversations with myself, to work on those interpersonal skills and, and deep conversation and, and problem solving. Uh, and I look forward to doing that. So I get that dopamine sensation. And I have a real big problem if I don't work out because I'm not getting to accomplish that thing. So my dopamine's off, my endorphins are off, my oxytocin's off, and I'm not getting what I want, want out of it. Uh, the endorphins are so big and so huge, especially when you're exercising, you're doing things, you're feeling accomplished. So all those things we talked about, that is why it is my sanctuary. And, and you know, ultimately we all have different things that we enjoy doing, but it's a, such a huge payoff to do something that not only is going to increase your health and wellness, that's going to give you more confidence. That's going to make you look better. That's going, that's going to basically increase your longevity. Um, and, and once you find what it is that works best for you and you're able to get into it, like you said, you, it's evolved for you over 10 years, yeah. what a huge benefit to your overall life and well being. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I talk about the, there's the social, um, and kind of like unspoken knowing when someone is fit and someone is healthy, that that like the, the interaction between two just human beings that there is, um, you, like, we know that, you know, we are very visual beings and like, we are sizing people up. Um, it's easy to see, uh, it is the, um, 
signal, right. That you're sending out to the world when you're taking care of yourself. Now that does that, like, there's a whole range, like you don't have to be extremely fit to send that signal, but there, that's a signal signal to, uh, you know, the world of how you perceive yourself, how you take care of yourself, what your value structure is. And I think that that it translates everywhere. It translates into your workplace, into, you know, your community, but it really does send the signal that um, you value, like what you value. And, um, and so I think that that is something to really talk about and to con- and to consider like what that value sends and what that signal sends out to the to the world and is that congruent with you know who you are and uh, also you know to just give people the confidence and the knowing to know that like you can start at any point you if you're not happy like you can start today and that does not have to look like you going to 10 to get to the top of the stairs right that it really does look like you're allowed to start where you are with one and stair step your way to where you want to be and and it's consistency and there is a discipline to that um and but within that you know to to say like the payoffs are that they're immeasurable right and then for you know that person, for our listeners, for someone who is just getting started, we, you know we've already said, hey, if you're doing zero, do one. But what else would you suggest, like on a very tactical level? Are they just going into the gym, and and are they starting with just machines? Should they go to the strength class? You know, strength class. Um, what would be just one, you know, like one sentence? Where would you steer them? And then I have one other question for you, and then we'll wrap it for today. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's that is, it's a very broad question um, because ultimately, again, it's, I'm going to answer shortly and quickly with saying, do what it is that you think that you will do most consistently, right? So while I would tell somebody, hey, if you're trying to lose weight, going to an aerobic fitness class, not the best. However, if that's what you love, that's your jam, and that's going to get you moving, and is your step number one to your 10-step process, 100%, get it going, do it. Get yourself out there. If you can find a friend, if you can find somebody, because we are social beings and when we love having a tribe to support us, if you can find your tribe uh, to support you in that process, 100% absolutely go do that, whatever that may be. Uh, whether that is just simply going for hikes, whether that's going to a fitness class, whether that's having a workout buddy. Find your tribe that's going to help motivate you when, on the days that you don't want to do it, when your dopamine's not working, that'll help get you out of the rut and say, no, come on, we got to do this and vice versa. Um, yeah. it, it's it, massively empower, impactful and empowering. Awesome. So Tony, your expertise is programming. How important is having a program and what's the benefit of having a program? So programming, ultimately, the biggest benefit is tracking of progress, right? Um, you, you track your money in your bank account. You, you feel success when you see that bank account go up. Otherwise, why would you ever care what your balance is? Why would you ever care how much his money is on your paycheck? No, you're, you're trying to achieve a success by tracking your progress. Uh, and the same thing happens with exercise and fitness. And, and in order for people to be successful, it really helps if you have the ability to know how much of the apple I have to bite on a daily basis to see results, right? How much do I need to do? When do I need to do it? And give me that information so that I can be successful. I, I like to call it, it's just a game. And every game has its rules, whether you're playing chess whether you're playing the game of life, you're playing Monopoly, all games have a structure around them. And it, once you understand the structure of what it takes to be successful, sky's the limit. So a, a program, both or really a program that is all encompassing for strength training, cardiovascular training and nutrition, it allows you to understand the rules of the game and be successful at accomplishing the game or accomplishing your goals. Right. So science is a success. That's one of your favorite quotes. So I'll tell you too, what, what, um, what the program does for me, um, it takes the guesswork out of what I need to do. And I think that that is hugely important, not only for the beginner, but, um, I I mean, I have just like you, you know, I've been in fitness and exercising and strength training well over 20 years for me to have a pre-planned program. Now you obviously are the creator of, of all your personal programs, but to have someone create the program for me. So you, you have the program, you know, written for me or, or just as, you know, the everyday person, just for me to open my app 
and to see exactly what I need to do and to trust and know that at that it was created with um, a theory, with a system, with science in mind, that it's not just like, you know, because this is something that I have always said, um, as someone who was a fitness trainer, um, a group fitness trainer, my goal every class was just to kick your ass. It had no rhyme or reason, like within itself, there was rhyme or reason, but the reason was to kick your ass, right? So that I wanted you to leave the class being like, holy crap, that was crazy. <laughs> That's all I cared about, right? But when it comes to a strength training program or, and even for a cardiovascular program, like outside of just like a one-off, right? The, the benefit is knowing that there is an up and a down and, you know, and we, we talk about this within, within the Cali Fit Body programs is um, that it's not just up and up some more and up some more. We're going to take you throughout the year. We're going to take you on the ride, whether you know it or not. It's not just one goal all year long, you know, like in the intensity stays level 10, we take you on that, that ride. So for me, the benefit of having the program is it takes all my thought work out of it. I just open the app and I do the workout and I do it in order. And I know that there is a rhyme and a reason and I don't have to think about it. So that's the benefit for me as having the program. And same for with my nutrition, you know, to know, to take the guesswork out of it, to allow you to, especially the, the more skilled you are and the more experience you have with all of it, you know, you can see whether um, it's in the strength program and it says squats and I know I can use the barbell or a dumbbells because I now have experience and I can just swap that out, you know, or in my meal plan in my meal program to know that chicken can also be turkey can also be fish, right? But like the structure is, is there. And that's the benefit, the huge, huge benefit to the everyday person to have yeah. the program. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the biggest things that gets people basically out of the game, so to speak, you know, where they just, I don't know what to do today. I, I don't yeah. like, I don't know what I'm going to do when I go to the gym. So I end up just not going to the gym because let's or be honest. Hustling around. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's work. We all have a lot of work as it is right now. And anything we can, we can rationalize at any point in our mind, something to do other than going to exercise. There's always a million things. Oh, I got to do laundry. I can't go work out. Oh, I'm not feeling well. Oh my, this, Oh my, that, Oh, I should get some more work done. Oh, I should be more productive. Oh, I should, Oh, my friends are going out, things of that nature. There's always going to be something that sounds better to do, uh, than going to work out. And in, even for us fitness professionals, we fall into the same traps. One of the biggest benefits of having a program is like you said, you already, you don't have to think about it. You just show up and say, what do I have to get done? What do I need to, need to accomplish? The busier you are in your life, the less time and energy you want to apply to figuring out what you need to do for your fitness. 100%, 100%. You know, that your, um, you know, you as a busy professional, your, um, your skill set, your knowledge, your your job is something else. Our job is this. Like, let us do this for you. Right. Um, thank you, Tony, so much for joining me today. So, on the next call in the summer series, I'm going to dive into everything talk relevant about nutrition and as it relates to you know what's the best nutrition not only for working out and to to supplement what you do in the gym. That was one thing that you highlighted. You know, making sure that the nutrition is there once you send the strength signal. Is the nutrition there to support that to actually do something with it? So we'll go over just the basics of what that nutrition looks like um, as it's related to your goals and in relationship to your workouts. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.